Hi, welcome to another Learn, Grow, Invest video. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with the CEO of One on One Educational Services, Ricardo Allen. So, so we're going to meet with Ricardo in a few minutes. So what we have been doing all of this week is going through the one on one prospectus. And it's it's been a lot of information. I know you're probably still trying to catch up on some of the videos that we've released. If you have not seen our prospectus review or financials review, check those out if you have not subscribed to our newsletters because we've been putting some some little nuggets in the newsletters that we don't mention in the videos or posts on social media so be sure to subscribe the link is in the description of this video so we have just a lot to speak about today we we have the chance to speak to ricardo personally and this is what we've been doing to get insights directly from the ceo of the business so i really hope you find this valuable so let's get started. Learning is the key to successful investing. And who doesn't want to invest in some way? Here at Learn Grow Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing, and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at Learn, Grow, Invest. All right, welcome again. So let us pray. We thank you so much, Lord, for this day. We thank you that we're able to see. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to invest and build wealth. Lord, we know that your word says you have given us, you know, talents and abilities that give so that that give us a chance to produce wealth. So I pray, Lord, for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding for this community. And we pray for your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. So before I bring, let me know if you're able to hear me okay. All right, I just saw a message that someone thinks my connection is bad. Let me know if you're able to hear me and see me okay. I think everything seems okay on my side, but let me know. So let me bring on Ricardo No, Ricardo. How are you doing? Welcome. Fantastic. How are you doing, Jermaine? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I see you've been trying your best to keep up with, with the millions of questions we have for you in our Telegram group. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. After Well, I'm very happy you added Una, right? So now I can teach her the answer to all the questions and then she exactly. can have a way, you know? Exactly. Exactly. So we, we have a lot of questions that we want to ask you, Ricardo. So what I have planned just to go through some of the questions that we had when we went through through the prospectus um there are some that we'll ask you just to give persons an understanding about the company as a whole and then there are some things that we'll ask you relating to the financials and then we have some general questions from from our community members that we'll take as we go so i hope you're up for it we, we're, we're scheduled for just about an hour and then at the end we'll try to see if we can get to some of those questions as it relates to how persons can apply because persons have been sharing their, their questions and we're hoping to get some of those answered near the end. Sounds okay. good? Let's go. Okay. So let's start with, I think probably the most um, important questions to start with. There are persons who may not have heard about one-on-one -on -one until this IPO came out. Can you give us just an understanding of just the breadth of one-on-one? -on -one? <laughs> No, absolutely, Jeremy. First of all, fantastic meeting just about everyone uh, in the group. Obviously, we have interacted over text and conversations. Uh, I'm Ricardo. I'm the founder and CEO of One and One. You know, started the business about nine years ago. We registered in 2013, started, launched the company in 2015. And before that, I was a tutor traveling around Kingston and St. Andrew tutoring students math, right? I'm a lover of math. You know, in my early days, I was studying to become an actuary, graduated university 2011, started my actuarial journey. Um, in 2013, I was actually preparing for an actuarial exam, Jermaine, when I had a book about this thick um, to go through. Couldn't bother go through it. I bought some videos online, prepared for the exam, sat the exam, and I got a perfect score. Nice. I, at the same time, I was a Fulbright scholar, scholar, you know, going away to study something called financial engineering. So at this art, my, my love is for math and just kind of, um, you know, using math to 
create financial products and, and to kind of, you know, create opportunities for people. And, and so, you know, I, when, when I stumbled on that wonderful idea of how well I learned when I had that thing in front of me, the videos and so on, I quit my job. I wrote to the embassy the most painful letter, Jeremy, to give up that scholarship. <laughs> um, people thought I was crazy to this day that they thought it was a, a bad decision. Certainly, no, they don't think that way. But certainly yeah. throughout my journey, people felt it was a bad decision. But you know what? Um, I, I did it because of the passion and, and, and also the vision that I had to transform education and training. I also felt at the time as a 24-year-old, uh, may have been 23 at the time, I'm not even sure, that I, I had enough knowledge to impact people through technology. And so I took the brave decision to give up that scholarship. I registered one-on-one -on -one formally as a corporation, you know, raised capital, $5 million, two years after we raised 20 million from Sajikor. We used that money to build out a core technology and content that we used to transition fully into the enterprise business in 2017. We've not looked back then, um, since then. I mean, you know, I can tell you, Jermaine, you know, the business up to 2017 was largely classroom based, where students came to us for instructions. Um, those students, uh, you know, they will tell you, you saw it on the Kalila Reynolds uh, program where mm -hmm. one of them saying, you know, we helped them to get grade ones in their subject in math and so on. So, you know, we've been known to deliver results um, for students in that area. But when we went fully enterprise, fully technology, we have now figured out how to deliver that same result, Jermaine, using what's called adaptive learning technology, right? You hear it and you hear AI. We're very obsessed with this idea of causing and writing algorithms to help and, and detect gaps in students' knowledge and to provide you know, courses and connect them with knowledge and monetizing that entire process. We believe this is a scalable process. This is our mantra. We want to get education back to be individualized. We want to get education back to be personal. That's my lifelong dream, and I've dedicated my life towards solving that problem. And I think we can. I think we can. So, you know, one-on-one -on -one is a personalized online learning company connecting people to knowledge. That's what we are. That's what we've built. And we have the technology and content to do just that. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, excellent overview. <laughs> uh, so based on so everything that you just said kind of centered around um, these core areas that we see here on your website and i'm actually going to share my screen so persons can see so you, you you've outlined on your website these divisions right so i, I don't know if you're able to see it as well yep yep so i'd want you to give persons an understanding of these divisions and so like what the division is about target customer and how you make money from it no, absolutely. And there's actually a wonderful section in the, in the prospectus that speaks to it in section Definitely. 11. But I'll kind of give you a, an overview. You know, Jermaine, as, as I mentioned, right, I want if you think of one on one as an education company, you will you will miss the opportunity here. Right. We're a technology company that's focused on the education sector, which is our sole focus right now, because there are so many problems to solve. So one on one is made up of two things. OK. One-on-one -on -one is made up of a platform, learning management platform that is very robust, world standard, best of breed, and we have content, okay? And these two things power every division in one-on-one. -on -one. And then let's start with the business side now, right? So I'm going to be telling you about platform. I'm going to be telling you about content, okay? On the business side, we go to our business and we say, hey, we want you to train your people better. Use our platform to train them and guess what? We can give you a course marketplace of over 10,000 courses that you can add to that platform and package it to your team members. So your team members now go on and they can learn about how to use Microsoft Excel, how to do project management, and so on. That's the course marketplace that comes along with our platform. Once you subscribe to one-on-one -on -one as a company, you have that platform that you can train live or on demand the live side, you can integrate your favorite video conferencing tools like Zoom, uh, Microsoft Teams, all of that comes prepackaged with our solution. And then obviously you get the content already built out in it. 10,000 courses off the shelf, a thousand of which is certified. So that's the one-on-one -on -one for business segment. 
for our business customers to germane we build content for them online so let's for example you want a you know a course that teaches your team members how to get onboarded into the company or how to do a specific task or how to use a software in the company we build training content um for you know that company secondly we have the the government side um you know jeremy now what we do on the government side again platform and content um on the platform in the government side we have what's called um in fact before i tell you about government we told you about the business how we use our platform and content right the content library and the, and the platform that gives the solution but on the enterprise side which is a little above business what we do is that we lease our platform german to these large multinational corporations think of cable and wireless international for example think of for example a caribbean examination council we provide our platform and it's called white labeling okay so yeah. it doesn't come with a one-on-one -on -one branding all it does is it comes the solution is there it's kind of like the engine in a ferrari and you can choose what you paint it, what it looks like, etc. So we lease our platform for people to brand it how they wish. But one and one is the technology that powers that entire platform. That's our enterprise business now. Let's go over to government now, Jeremy. On the government side, we do two very exciting things, right? You hear this term about digital transformation. Well, we're leading the charge in the Caribbean behind digitalizing education systems. And we're doing that using a software called Open EMIS. That's Open Education Management Information System now. And we've partnered up with a company out of New York called Community Systems Foundation. And they have worked with UNESCO to build this solution. One-on-one, -on -one, we are the regional implementation partner for this solution. There are nine governments in, in the Caribbean who uses the Open EMIS solution. 40 governments worldwide who uses the solution. And our job is to use the solution to fully digitalize the education system. Um, every country that we, we do this with, you get paid, for example, about a million US per year. And then, you know, you can tag on to that some additional work. So it's really good business for us, but we're also making an impact. So that's, that's on the education management side, Jeremy. And yeah. then one of my favorite products now, Jeremy, you know, I call it the classroom in a box. It's a nice little box. You know, what's your favorite product? I see, I see you ask, you ask right, right when I'm about to, to put it. It's like you're new, right? Yeah. So, so this is my classroom in a box, okay? It's a nice little box that we've developed. And on top of this now, you know, I can take my little phone. Let me get my phone, Jermaine. And once I take out my phone and I go on my Wi-Fi, I can connect directly to the box. And on this box lies you know, a wealth of resources, internet-based resources that we pretty much offline onto the box. So Khan Academy is on the box. Wikipedia is on the box. Your favorite websites are on the box, stored for offline access and viewing. You know, and, and, and the beauty of this solution, Jermaine, why I like it so much, I'm a place, from a place called Rio Bueno, Trelawney. Far, 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 you know, one thing, you know, way, way, way in Trelawney. And, you know, I, I tell you something, when I was going to school, you know, we didn't have electricity until 2004 and, and neither did we have internet connectivity. And so I was so, so inspired to create a solution like this to access or to be accessed by some of the persons who have been disenfranchised from the offline environments. 46% of Jamaicans do not have access to internet. And this is not only a Jamaican problem. This is a problem in a lot of developing countries. And so Classroom in a Box will solve that problem. The last problem Classroom in a Box will solve is that for schools who have issues with internet bandwidth, which is all schools, by the way, we will place this device in all schools. And pretty much what it does is to cache the internet, which stores an offline um, you know, temporary copy of that. And then you can connect to the box and then you just stream your favorite videos and, and resources. So it acts as like a management of your internet resources as well as an offline version of that. So that's the government side of the business. And we earn a, a lot of money from that. And, and so that's enterprise, that's government. That, that's what one-on-one -on -one earns this money right now, okay? Now, this is where it gets exciting. 
from this IPO, we are raising this capital to go back into how we started. Remember I told you how we started, right? I yes. used to drive around Kingston. I used to go into people's home. I used to tutor. And we tutored math. And we did really, really well at it, Jeremy. But now, what we've seen since COVID is that there's been a global shift in this need for online learning. Um, teachers are coming to us to use our platform to teach their students. And trainers have come to us to say, you know what, Ricard, I want to use your platform to create my courses so I can reach my people. Because COVID yeah. shut down all the physical training. And so, Jermaine, the question is, how, how could one-on-one -on -one stay true to the fact that we're a technology company that powers education? And so, our strategy to re-enter the retail space, Jermaine, is to use our platform. Remember now, we'll come back to that. The platform and content. And we're going to lease this to teachers in a way that allows them to create their courses mm -hmm. and get their students on and deliver those courses to their students live and on demand. We get a commission on that Uber model, right? That is an exponential model. As many teachers as you want can sign up and meet with their students there. We've solved online payments for them. We've solved the conferencing tools for them. All their favorite tools are there so they can teach and earn money from teaching. Secondly, the trainers, they're going to be creating their courses, certifying these courses and meeting with those who they want to train. We get a percentage of all of those transactions. And so that's our strategy to get back in. That's an overview of our products. And, you know, we're very focused on achieving those objectives. Um, of course, you know, later on in the conversation, you'll hear about um, Una and conversational AI and how that will be infused across all our product offerings. Yes, great, great. Thank you. So I have some questions here related specifically what you were just talking about, so we'll get to those. A Limitless Podcast is asking if you've ever considered partnering with universities. Absolutely. We want all the lecturers to use our platform to, to kind of decentralize um, their course offering. So one of the things that we want to do is to team up with some of the really good lecturers so that they can start offering these small courses to people. You see, we believe that training going forward will not be limited to the three and four year degrees, Jeremy. I really believe that. Yeah. I believe that, you know, a skill is so easy to learn these days. It takes you a weekend. The other day I learned how to use Adobe Illustrator just because I was trying to edit something. Uh, you know, I, I think I was editing a, a photo or something like that. But anyhow, we believe in short skills based focused courses. And we're partnering with these lecturers instead of offering this course over an entire semester can you offer a course on a weekend can you offer a yeah. course on a day or six weeks and so on charge for that course and we get a percentage of that so we're very um you know serious about that model the university space so as far as to provide our solution for the university to use i think that's a little complicated at this time and also very saturated um, and it also takes far too long to get a university to agree to some of these things. You know, we want to remain very agile. Um, it's very easy to convince a trainer who is offering training face-to-face -to, -face to say to him, use this platform, collect your money online and go. Yeah. And before you know it, if we can get all of those lecturers doing that, we'll be fantastic. Great, great. All right, next question. Rick is asking, is a classroom in a box engineered and preparatory to one-on-one? -on -one? I think you yes, kind of alluded to it a little bit, but... Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So we have kind of partnered up with a company internationally to build the version that we're using now. And the content that's on this is going to be proprietary to one on one. Right. So we've kind of built on a baseline technology um, and we've kind of customized the hardware to our liking. OK, so in the same way, for example, Samsung builds their phone and they use the Intel chip or the this and the that and get it together. That's kind of how we have engineered this device. But certainly the software that runs on it. And the content that runs on it, the content for sure is one-on-one -on -one, and the software we have licensed to kind of provide. So that's the idea and that's how we're kind of running it. Of course, some of these things, when we go into it, it's so important to test the waters first. You really don't want to throw money into something that you don't know how it will do. And yeah. so, you know, where we are now is that we've gotten a $15 million innovation grant from the Development Bank of Jamaica they have really funded or they are funding the commercialization of this opportunity and we have some big news that we're going to be releasing very soon about an a caribbean wide expansion strategy for these devices and a contract that we have 
um, secured there as well. So, you know, yeah. it's big news for this. And, you know, you will see some things more at the investor briefing next week. I can't tell you everything, Jermaine, but let's go. Okay, great. I was just going to ask if you can give us anything here, but uh, I just I just heard you say it. Okay, cool. So Dale was asking what's the storage on, on the devices. Yes, yeah, so it depends, right? So this this one has actually two hundred and fifty gigabytes on it. Um, you know, we have we have we have a liquid tower that goes up to a terabyte of storage, but enough to really store content that students need, right? Obviously, we can't. You know, the internet is a big place. Okay, so uh, we cache we cache content up to that level and thing. But there's a lot of storage. Uh, we have a terabyte device, but they can scale based on need. But we've seen based on our use case of it, two hundred and fifty to five hundred should be fine. Okay, great, great. Uh, Rick is asking, is one-on-one -on -one a substitute for Moodle and Arian? No, I, I would say no. You know, Moodle is an open source platform. In fact, Moodle runs on this device. So we've implemented Moodle on this device, by the way. Great. Um, you know, in terms of, let, let me just say, Arian, Moodle, um, Moodle for sure is open source. You can use an online learning platform from Moodle that, you know, you customize it and you make it work, right? Um, just about most platforms that are online platforms, you probably could find an open source version. The problem with open source is that you have to have the technical expertise to do it and so on. What we offer is convenience, okay? Uh, we have built a very robust platform, you know, miles ahead of kind of Moodle. I mean, obviously Moodle, you bring it together, it can be a beast, don't get me wrong. It's really a very powerful platform. But we, we have a really impressive technology that we're infusing with AI and some other um, ideas um, to really make learning adaptable and easy. Skills analysis, all of those things, adaptable and easy. Some of our clients, I can tell you, are moving away from Moodle onto our platform. And the reason for this, again, is that we're very, very specific about what we do. Yeah. We assess your skills gap, okay? And we create automatic learning paths so that you can acquire knowledge. That's our mantra. Um, so we're not just giving you a learning platform where you can just learn and you can use it. We're very specific about how we do that, okay? So, you know, Moodle and Area and those are platforms where I'm telling you what one-on-one -on -one brings to the table is much more than that. And we have a very robust platform that's going to take us globally, you know? Great. All right, next question, as I think is related here. Um, inspiration and the word is asking, what is the main differentiating factor between one-on-one -on -one and edifocal? You know, I, I genuinely don't like to, to talk about um, our competitors. I mean, I think the market will see that. But what I can tell you is that one-on-one -on -one is very much a technology company. Uh, we have a number of on, uh, education company in the space that actually uses one-on-one -on -one technology. Some of them I can share, some of them I can't. Um, but, you know, we are the backbone of, of online learning and that's the space we want to play in, right? So, you know, if, if anybody on this call, for example, as, an, uh, as a, you know, company that they're trying to start or a lot of entrepreneurs have come to me and say, Ricardo, I want to start an online learning company. And my view to them is that let one-on-one -on -one give you the technology and you just run it, right? Nobody has to know. That's our white label business. Yeah. So we see ourselves as a technology company. We invest over $60 million per year in research and development, guys. You have seen what we've done with Una and Una learning the prospectus and being able to Una learning the prospectus and being able to kind of explain that to you, right? That's the power of our technology. Um, Dr. Ricardo Anderson, he heads up our research and development team. He's an assistant professor. He focuses on AI and machine learning. Uh, don't be surprised in a few years to have one-on-one -on -one build out some sort of algorithm that can teach math to anybody in the world, right? Um, that, that's, that's who we are. Uh, one, one thing is I'll say to you as well, you know, that differentiate one-on-one -on -one from any company is that we focus on personalizing education, individualizing education. I cannot tell you um, enough. When I went to UA, I, you know, I was in a big lecture room, C5, and we were doing math, first year math. I'll never forget. And then they took us in these um, tutoring sessions, like 10 students to one. It was 2008. It must be 2009. And the minute I saw that concept, I went up to JC and I started teaching math with two students. Because it was amazing to me. Just 10 students with one teacher. It was amazing. And so, you know, I, I, I love to get back learning to be personalized and individualized. Learning started that way, by the way, guys. Industrialization necessitated people going into a classroom 
and we mass produce people for the working world. And so is industrialization caused that, you know, but learning was meant to be personal and the technology exists now for us to bring it back to personal because personal learning is effective. So imagine a world, Jeremy, we could give every student a tutor. Imagine a world we could give every student a teacher, a personalized teacher. That's how learning was meant to be. And that's what we're using the technology to deliver. Okay. So you're saying person shouldn't get caught up in any direct comparisons. Your focus is mainly technology. So, so they shouldn't think yeah, of we, as being comparable in that way. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't. I, I, as I, if you think of one and one as an education company, you miss the opportunity. Gone, yeah. gone, gone. Great, great. All right. So, um, inspiration on the word is saying that is is asking what kinds of proprietary rights or partnership have you entered into with the companies that you have listed on your website and their own LMS. I think it, it seems like a, a lot. I don't know if you're able to read it here. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what they're asking. Some uh, major online websites and resources. Inspiration on the word, I don't know if you can get very specific or give us some, some examples that maybe Ricardo can, can pick out. Um, let's move on for now. Yeah. Um, Relaxation Hub is asking, what if face-to-face -face returns? Any plans for the business in that case? Well, we want face-to-face -to, -face to, to come back, actually, because remember now, um, remember our business model, guys, right? Always remember, we're the technology behind online learning and the content behind online learning, okay? So face-to-face -face or not, a government has signed a three-, five-year or five-year contract with one-on-one. -on -one. That whether you're learning at home or in the classroom, one-on-one -on -one as the business, right? So we don't earn from students being in a classroom or outside of a classroom. That's not how we earn a lot of our money. Our money is earned from us being the technology provider that provides a system that provides assistance whether you're in the classroom or out of the classroom. Remember, too, we earn a lot from companies, companies who use our platform to train. So whether you're training remotely or you're training on-site, once a company has many branches all over the world, that's how we earn our money. So that's what, and I just keep saying, you know, if you if you think of one-on-one -on -one, um, as an education company, you miss the opportunity. What, what you miss is the fact that we actually benefit no matter where you are at yeah. home or, in fact, that's the mantra that we have. So it doesn't affect us at all. In fact, it helps us because what we want is that, obviously, um, teachers we want as many teachers and it will help with our distribution as well to get into those schools and get those teachers sign up as well so it's very hard to get to the teachers now so this will actually help us by them getting back to the school okay great great thank you uh limitless podcast what is your edge over conventional extra lessons at pep csec and cape level i think i think you've kind of answered this yeah. already everything yeah. that you've said so let's yeah. At Limitless Podcast, I think based on everything that, that, that Ricardo has said so far, he has answered this. Uh, what do you think, I think this one is relevant now, what do you think would be one-on-one's most successful product in the next 10 years? Man, you're getting into it, you're getting into it. Listen, I, I love, you know what, I'm a, I'm a techie at art, right? You know, so in my office, I have an have a Oculus, right? Like, mm -hmm. and, you know, I have, I have two, um, two things and, Many people don't believe me, but I spend most of my days like this just doing all sorts of things, right? And, you know, we're going to be building content for the metaverse, right, actually. And this is something I'm very excited about, by the way. And so, we're, we're again, we're technology and content. I keep saying it. If you miss it, that's on you, right? Um, I also believe conversational AI is, is, is a big future um in education and that's something i'm very obsessed about uh, i must tell you um i'm very intrigued by the concept or the, the 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 vision of having um a tool that can learn in the same way that a human learns using neural networks and so on and certain ideas behind machine learning algorithms and so on and teaching those same concepts back to people can i teach our or can i structure a certain algorithm to learn um, in the way humans learn and teach that back to people. So I, I, I'm, I'm very big on two things in the next 10 years. One, it is AI in education. That's artificial intelligence in education, specifically conversational AI. Um, I have two daughters. One is four and one is seven. And, um, you know, Kari and Emma, and, you know, I experiment with them every day. I don't want their moms to hear that, but I experiment with them every day in terms of how they interact with the technology. But also um, the virtual reality, uh, we believe that, you know, the, the, the concept of, 
building uh, training. So yesterday I, I traveled to space on, in my Oculus and, you know, I was in a spaceship. Just imagine building out training on this thing where, you know, you can just put it on and immerse yourself in a certain environment and get trained, right? Um, it, it's amazing what we can do. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. All right. So I'm actually going through some, some questions were sent in advance on Telegram. Thank you, Limitless Podcast, for that question. I'm going to take some questions from Telegram. A few were sent to me. So I'm just scrolling, looking for it now. Um, let's start with, so, so the first, well, these questions seem to be centered around the financials. Well, we've kind of been going for about 30 minutes now, so I, I think it's a good time to start there. So we, were, we did a full financial review from, from the prospectus. You gave us numbers from 2017 till now, and you gave us some, some well, two sets of projections, one for the remaining three months of 2022 and one, one set for the next three years. So I want to talk to you about those, but in a second, one of the things we saw that when we were going through your balance sheet is that trade and, and accounts receivable number. So the question is, uh, what are the, well, is, is out of that 114 million that we see in terms of receivables, what's the status of that? Um, how, how are your receivables managed? Is it, is, um, we see that you have about 800,000 in expected credit losses, which is not a lot. So how do you, you know, plan to, to get in that 114 million that's due to you? All right, that's fine. So um, the receivable that I would actually look at, Jermaine, is the one for um, the the nine months up to this year, because mm -hmm. obviously, you know, the balance sheet as at the last date is, is better. So a lot of our contracts are with government. They pay, they take, let's say, anywhere from three to six months to pay you. As at the end of May, our receivables stood at 126 million. Four million of that was unearned revenues. So it's really 122 million. And of that 122 million, about 63 million of it was due from government, when another 60 is due from the balance of a supplier who has actually purchased some of these boxes, right? Um, they were supposed to deliver it to schools. Schools were closed, and we entered into a special arrangement for it to be paid after schools reopened, which has now happened. So within the next three months, we should collect that 60 million. And relating to the 63 from the government side, uh, I cannot speak to anything that is not in this prospectus, but what I can tell you is that we've pretty much collected everything. So, okay. um, you know, our receivables is is not a concern for us. Is essential. What has happened is that you're seeing it at times when you know it is highest and we have not collected. But I can tell you that um, if you when you see that three months coming out of this um, quarter here, you would see a drastic reduction in that. I mean, it's just, it's just the way the business work in terms of governments, as I said. At any point in time, it's $100 million. Um, in, in, for example, March, we collected a $60 million here, a $80 million there. That's how the business works. And we're collecting in U.S. dollars as well. And then it takes time to get the money here, believe it or not. You'd think it's overnight. Yeah. It's not. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we are very much in... If you look, our cash flow is very much positive, and we are managing our cash effectively, but we have had to work with governments who take a little time to pay and they stress okay. you out some time, but we love them so much. We love them. So are there standard terms that you will, will enter in with, with these governments, or it's as they ask? Because I know sometimes the government say, well, we need 60 days, we need 90 days, or this may really take 120 days you know that's what we that's that's what we can do is it that you allow them to to determine when they pay and you just trust that they will or you have standard terms that you try it's to definitely work? not right you have standard terms right and then you know they will tell you that boy this took long and so on but yeah we have standard terms Jermaine. Okay. um the, the terms that we have is really 60 days for governments for a small business that can be a lot uh, but we understand and we try to work with them. Sometimes it spills over to like a third month. Then if you have the end of the year election, not election, um, you know, the turn of the fiscal year, yeah. it takes time to, to get, it's so many complications when dealing with governments. But thankfully we are, we're backed by Sajikor and we're backed by, you know, a Panjam who they have really done us well in terms of providing us funding when we need it to keep our, um you know our, our working capital going and you know obviously we have a bunch of shareholders who are pretty dedicated to the cause but what i can tell you my brother is that you know we have we we are tightening up on that you know 
and let me just tell you something, a, a true entrepreneurial moment, okay? Um, you know, when you are young and you're just doing business, you tend to be very flexible with receivable because you want that business. And so as you get bigger and bigger and bigger, you kind of feel your strength now, right? You start yeah. saying, oh, I can beat this one up and get a more aggressive um, credit terms. So, you know, I'm just being truthful to say to you that, you know, when we just started and, business. you know, we wanted these deals, you, you had to do it. You had to give three months, you had to give four months. And I can tell you, no, we're asking people to pay us in 30 days. And so that's where we're going. And we're tightening up too. I mean, we have a very effective CFO who is on our clients and getting them going. And we do a very good job in keeping our clients happy. But one thing I can tell you, I think one of the things that we could have done better is to detail these receivables so that it didn't raise a question. And yeah. that's, you know, we put up our hand for that. Um, but I'm here to tell you that our receivables are under control. We've collected more than half of that already, Jeremy. I mean, it's not okay. a problem, right? No, Jeremy, I'm going to tell you, I'm very distracted by your chat, sir. I think I need to turn it off. Somebody has just asked about Google Lambda. Now I want to talk all this time about sentience and, you know, these things. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm also trying to, to, to glance <laughs> in the Telegram group from time to time, and there are persons sending me DMs as well. So, yeah. I mean, that, that's just how it is, right? And that's that's the, the good thing about our community. People want to learn, and we, yeah. we've been encouraging them to ask as many questions as possible to make an informed investment decision yeah. so trust me when i tell you if we if we allow it and say you know q a ongoing until forever we'll probably be here until midnight answering questions yeah so i mean we we can say that because we're going to talk about una in a in a little bit but no problem, let's try okay. to kind of send to the next few questions around the sure. earnings so you 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 have a three-month projection how you're gonna close out the financial year, right? So you're you're saying in the first nine months of 2022 that you've shown us, you're you're able to 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 have 40 million in net profit, and you're projecting that in just three months you're gonna be able to exceed what you did in the first nine months. Can you talk to us about that a, a little bit here? Yeah, let me just say, yeah, no, that's 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 exactly it. Now, if you compare to last year. The same period, Jeremy, you'd have seen up to nine months we made $14 million in profit. And then the last three months we made about $53 million in profit. Okay. And that's what took us to the is it, is it something about that last quarter? Yeah. Let me tell you what happened. The contracts that we have, we have to, accounting principle, this dictates that we have to book some of the work in specific periods, right? So, for okay. example, when we actually, uh, for example, before the start of the new school year, a lot of the work comes there, right? And so we have to book it accordingly, and, and a lot of our costs are incurred there. So it's the seasonality of those government contracts, it's the seasonality okay. of the digitalizing education systems, and so on. I mean, obviously, going forward, we're looking to smooth this out. Most of these contracts that we, we have already, so you see all that $140 million at the top that you have there? Yes. We have $101 million already signed off. So those are contracts that we have already, right? Um, that if we were allowed, we would have booked them in a more uniform manner. But it's just the base of the business. Um, you know, we're actually considering whether or not the financial year, how we have it now, we may need to adjust it. But that's that's the beast of the, the business that we're in. But, you know, 101 million of that 140 we have in contracts currently. Okay. And we're now, we have a very aggressive uh, pipeline for the remaining 39 million and that 39 million i can tell you my brother is you know is a, is it's pretty much done right so again i try not to talk my lawyers told me not to say anything that is not yeah, yeah, and, and, and we and we want you to respect that as much as as possible we certainly wouldn't want you to get you in get you in in any trouble you mentioned contracts though so you have a list of contracts that you've shared yep I, the, the the assumption that we had when we were doing the review is that this doesn't represent all of your contracts. Is it? Is there anything that you can say to us for the contracts that are not shown? Because we we see some here, some of which expire this year. I'm I'm actually trying to find it. Yeah, so I found it. So you have some that would have expired. Some this one with, with the Ministry of Education in June. Uh, you have one coming up with with the Flow Foundation in August. Uh, one with Pan Pan American Development Fund for August. Uh, some of these are one year. Can you talk to us about some of these contracts? Yeah, no, for sure. So in our business, Jeremy, we we um 
you know. So when I buy a phone, okay, and the phone spans three years, I probably buy a new phone, okay. Um, with our business, you're buying a license to a software for a period of time. And a lot of our focus is actually to acquire customers and to keep them as long as possible. Okay? So it's not a phone that has an expiry time. This is a software that we update every single day and you use. And so expiry happens all the time. Last year, we, we had a contract for five years that expired and we renewed for an additional five years. Um, you know, we had another one that expired after three years. We renewed another one after one year and we renewed. So these are contract lengths, but we renew, we have a very high renewal. We have a very learned, sorry, very low churn rate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Churn rate is the rate at which your customers leave you. Okay. And we have a very high low churn, churn rate translates to a very high renewal rate. Okay. And so we have a very high renewal rate, and you can expect most of these contracts are being renewed. That's the, that's the nature of our business, is what I'm saying, is to keep our customers happy. Now, my competitors are probably looking at this and say, oh, this expired, then let me go and, let me go and catch it. You know, we have a very good team. Um, you know, we try to be as transparent as possible, obviously. But this is, this is the natural course of the business. Don't think of... There's, there's, there's literally very few ending contracts that we have because we don't sell anything. Everything that we do, we lease it for a period of time. And some people like the one-year thing. They renew every year. Some people like the, 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 you know, the, the automatic renewal. It, you know, it's the flavor of the game. Okay. So in terms of are there any notable contracts that are not listed here that you can share with us? Yeah, I wouldn't be able to talk about it, would I? Okay. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be able to talk. No, what I can tell you is that... Um, we have a number of government agencies that are run on one-on-one. -on -one. We have a number of people who are run on one-on-one, -on -one, you know, uh, countries, you know, we're bounded by confidentiality in some of them that we could not share. But we have a number of people who use one-on-one -on -one to power their entire thing. I mean, you know, public information here, you know, rev up that trains entrepreneurs. They use one-on-one. -on -one. Ministry of Health uses one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I, you know, I could go on and on and on, Jeremy. Yeah, but we, 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 wherever you see training, I want you to look closer to the platform that they're using and look at the bottom and you see if you see a one-on-one. -on -one <laughs> okay, we'll okay. All right. So just for a few minutes here, I want you to talk to us about your projections. Now, based on what you've shared with us, we can consider that 334 million that you're you're estimating for 2022 to be booked. Yeah. Based on that, you've set some projections for 23, 24, and 25. Yeah. Now, it's hard to, to, to predict what the next three years would look like, but at least for 2023, what went into your, your projections for revenues for 23? So we noticed that what, one of the things that you did is list each product line, list the expected revenues. Is it, is it safe to say, no, I didn't, I didn't do the math, but is it safe to say that all of those revenues would combine to give us this 433? There you go, my brother. I've laid it out for you. It's, it's very, you know, let, let me just say this, right? Let me just say this, right? What I love about our business, you know, my brother, is the fact that when we book a contract, and this is the exponential growth in the business now, when you book a contract, and you have a team. We have what's called a customer success team. So if you think about one-on-one, -on -one, let me just say the operation. So think of a, a, a production facility for a car, okay? Where you, you build the car, somebody put on the handles on the car, and then somebody spray paint the car, and then you have it sold, etc. right? One-on-one -on -one is simple. We've built a software and content, and that's a one-time focus, and we continue to update it over time. I want you to follow me. Watch this and now, right? And then you now, once you've built the software... You pass it to your marketing team to start marketing it. Now, what, you know, once you build the software, you have to what's called productize it. So you have to put out a nice wrapper over it, look and feel, branding, etc. Then you market it. Then you sell it. So that's my sales team. Once you sell it, the accounts, people, they collect the money. Okay? And the contracts and so on. And then you have what's called customer onboarding and retention. One-on-one -on -one invests a lot of money in onboarding and retention. So we don't lose our customers. That's the key. So you see that 324 million German that you see we're going to make year? Yeah. You can consider that we don't lose that next year. Mm -hmm. So what you're seeing effectively is that I have a sales team who will add an additional 130 million or 100 million on that 
on top of that. No, and no. so that's how we grow, right? So you see in the 500 and the 600 million now, it's all about going there and acquiring new customers without losing any. Okay. 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 So that's the, that's the flavor of the game. Uh, of course, as we go back into the retail market, we're going to have another flavor because obviously we have to get new students every year. But what you want to do, you want to get them young and have them grow with you. You follow? And grow with okay. you. You follow? And you should understood. Be understood. So one of the things I wanted to ask you while we're talking about revenues, so you've, you've You've given us the, the understanding that that one on one is a Caribbean wide company with with potential to be global, right? So in terms of is it that you are marketing your services aggressively throughout the Caribbean or is the focus Jamaica and then you see opportunities as they come up? Talk to us about like the global strategy for the company. No, that's a very good question. What I would say right now is that, you know, our strategic relationships with people like Cable and Wireless International, Liberty Latin America, you know, one of the contracts that we have there actually has a deal worth 500,000 US to enter into Panama and Costa Rica. We have that deal on the table. We've not done that just yet. So the IPO money will be used to actually fund those market entry into Panama and Costa Rica. Obviously, we'll have to learn some Spanish. By the way, I don't know any Spanish just now. I know a little, actually. I'll ask Una, though. She'll probably tell me, right? I'm not sure, right? But have Una, Una tells everything. But, you know, we, 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 we are going to be entering those markets. But our strategic relationships allow us to go into these markets. Jermaine, a lot of persons may have not known about one-on-one -on -one because of our business model. We stand behind our customers by giving them the technology to run their own businesses, okay? And that's sometimes something we can't go and talk about, okay? And therefore, what I'm saying, by us going back into the retail market, Jeremy, we will have to market, which is why I have earmarked $40 million to market, and we're going to be marketing to the Caribbean, okay? And so my attitude is to continue that revenue flavor of continue to earn um, most of our revenues outside of Jamaica, while we continue to navigate the Jamaican space, you'd be surprised to know that in Jamaica, we have a much more mature market for these products than we do in other countries. You know, when I travel to some countries, I feel like Christopher Columbus sometime, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, that may be a bad example, by the way, so let's scratch that. But, you know, yeah. I feel like, you know, the point I'm making is that I feel like someone who is going there with just knowledge yeah, coming from I, I understood what you're saying as you're the, you're going there for the first time and not all the negative stuff yeah yeah not all the negative stuff. <laughs> just but, but yeah going there for the first time seeing what need is needed coming from the knowledge and say okay we could do this that, that and the other so it's easier so it's easier to sell somebody something that has not much okay so that that's the attitude that that we we, we approach and, and so on so look we will be marketing even more aggressively i think our model to go into the retail space though germain will allow us to make this a little easier and i'll tell you why we're partnering with teachers to use our platform to create their courses to sell and generate income we're partnering with trainers to create courses to sell and certify people and so we are marketing to those people so that we can create a chain now to push that out kind of thing because these trainers and teachers already know the market and so we are standing behind them and getting more people to get connected in this environment so um we have a very unique marketing strategy in terms of global strategy you know i tell i tell you something um german and i just want all your listeners to hear this jamaica's gdp is 13 and a half billion us dollars okay WhatsApp was sold in 2013, I believe, for 16 billion US dollars. That was an innovation by a guy who tried to solve a problem of sending SMS messages. Mm -hmm. US did not have a SMS problem because you could send SMS for free. Yeah. Jamaica had a problem where we had to spend three dollars and eleven dollars to send cross network. We had the same internet, the same resources. So as far as mental faculties and so on to do it, why then could WhatsApp not be created in Jamaica? I'm of the view that WhatsApp could have been created in Jamaica, a company that was sold for more than the entire annual production of Jamaica. And that's where we are focused on. You see this thing about conversational AI and adaptive learning, my brother? Mm -hmm. if we can solve that problem that no one else has you know, been able to solve globally. We're ambitious enough ambitious enough and we are thoughtful enough and brave enough to believe that we can 
And sometimes the ones who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world, my brother, are the That's ones who do. So let's let's go, let's go, let's go. That's where I'm at, man. Let's go. All right, great. So there is a question here in the chat from Khalil about speak to us about this role that you've listed on the CEO's Office of Special Business Development Executive. What does that role entail in, in terms of your org structure? Yeah, I mean, you see that. I see somebody commenting on that. Yeah, so look, for me, um, my job at one on one, I love, by the way, I love um, I love product visioning and my my strengths are product visioning and, and kind of selling vision, right? So I, I enjoy doing it and, and coming up with product ideas and so on. But one of the things that I think, you know, coming out of this IPO that we'll need to take advantage of is just all the opportunities opportunities that are around and so you know keeping there are two things that you focus on in a business you focus on the now and you focus on the future my sales team in terms of my other sales focuses on the now right hitting those annual goals and so on is it a special person sometimes Jeremy and I wake up with some ideas on going to Mars for example or doing something different or um engaging something and you don't want to distract the team because we're very focused you know and so this, this special business development executive is someone out of my office that sits very close to me. I also have Akeem, who is my commercial analyst and my legal intern who works along with me and combine, you know, we have a, uh, you know, a compliance executive that, that sits in my office as well that ensures that my goals are achieved from a CEO kind of thing, strategy, strategic level. But then we have our sales team that focuses on the core day-to-day -day business. So that's the idea. That's the flavor. I keep some close ver things very close to me, planning ahead, while ensuring that my core operational team focuses on the now. So that's how I've been able to kind of grow the business, and I don't, I don't want to change that now. Okay, okay. Someone right. says, to the crazy ones. I see that we have a Steve Jobs fan <laughs> there, right? I, I, I love that, man. I love that. I love that. All right. So, Khalil, same person actually asked this question. What do you say that the earnings are lumpy now i think the reason why this may come up is based on so what i mean that i'm not saying i'm answering for you can let me know but based on my understanding of everything you've said so far there are some some um seasonalities to it based on the nature of just working with governments maybe the timing of the school year etc um but you yeah. can go ahead and, and answer the question based on what khalil yeah said. you know the based on the mix no um khalil i can say that you know again we have the contracts the contracts don't change right so it's not like we're getting more contracts in the summer that's not what happens we have the contracts but the requirements of the contracts are twofold right number one we get paid for our annual mint or monthly maintenance costs and support those are smooth across the year okay and then in the summer months, you have to book, for example, extra work that you do or, you know, just kind of getting ready to, for the new school year or, you know, every school year kind of changes. So you have to do that. And our accountants don't actually allow us to spread that throughout the year. So it's more of an accounting treatment than anything else so that we comply with all the international standards. But I wouldn't say that our earnings um, are lumpy. What I will tell you is that my brother... As we continue to build out the business, um, you know, getting contracts and, and so on and growing on top of the revenues that we have, that's something we take pride in and we've been doing an excellent job of that. And going forward, when we get to this class-based business, you're going to see the reverse now where you're going to see us earning a lot from September to May to now normalize what you're seeing between those three months. You see what I'm saying? So you're going to see um, the schools and the, the, the individuals coming on and spending money between September and May, which is the school year, or September and June. And then, no, it will normalize everything. So I think it will be kind of, um, you know, uniformly distributed. A little bit. Okay. 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 So Investopedia, I don't know if it's the, 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 the platform that we know, asking with classroom in a box, would you be providing financial literacy to others or just courses in relation to basic learning? You know, my vision is to place this classroom in a box in any community, anywhere, and to outfit it with content. I have a dream. I have a dream to put this thing um, in a way where people, when they sit on the corner, they can just take out their phone and connect to it and start doing a course and getting certified right there on the corner, right? We can call it learn on the corner. Uh, we can call it train on the corner. We can call it upskill on the corner. So listen, 
I have a dream to ensure that everybody in Jamaica um, can attain a good, solid education. You know, there's no better thing in Jamaica or the world than to be able to care for your family. In order to care for, me, for your fam family, unfortunately, you need money. And to get money, you must be able to add value in some way in, world, in the world so that you can get paid. And one of the best ways to do that is to attain a skill or educational background so you can do it. My dream, Jeremy, and I must be honest with you, I'm very upset that less than 20% of Jamaica's workforce, which now stands at 1.3 million, is not trained beyond the secondary school level. I'm very annoyed that this pass rate for math in our country is 48%. I'm equally annoyed by the number of um, young men and women who are at the stoplight begging and wiping windows and so on. And so I have a dream to provide equal educational opportunity to everyone, which is why we've created the classroom in a box to reach everyone, financial literacy, um, you know, knowledge on civics, all of those things we want to bring to people. And so that's our dream. Great, great. Um, so I'm seeing, I think it's Dr. Ricardo Anderson backstage. Um, yeah. is, is the is the Una guy, man. Is the yes, Una so I'm saying it's, it, it, it's about <laughs> that time. Let me just take one more question before I bring you on, Dr. Anderson. Uh, will there be an app for the courses in the future? I guess person are asking if they'll be able to consume content through maybe an app. You know, that's a great idea. You know what? If someone is listening who is great at those things and building up, hit me up and we'll talk about that. Um, you know, we have, we, have, we have many things in our plans. Dr. Anderson can speak more to them, obviously. Um, but as we grow and we kind of scale, I, I'm pretty sure that we'll have to have a mobile first strategy because that's the way to go. Um, but right now, obviously, we, we, we're not too focused on that. But certainly, if someone is listening now and as a company and potentially wants to be acquired or, you know, we could do some business, let's go, man. Let's go. Yeah, great. All right. So I'm going to bring on Dr. Anderson now. Dr. Anderson, how are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. So, um, so we... We have been, so Ricardo told us a story of how Una was built, but I don't know if you guys want to give us a genesis of how everything started. And uh, um, Ricardo, you're also sharing the vision about what you will see in terms of, we're joking in the group about, you know, this is how, this is how, um, you know, Una is going to take over the world. So, you know, give, <laughs> us, give us some background behind, you know, the project. Dr. Anderson can do that, man. Dr. Anderson, yeah. just, just yeah. tell them about the ideas about our adaptive learning and so on and UNO. Yeah, man. So thank you again, um, Jermaine. Um, you know, my, my passion really is, is how we can use technology to make um, things better, and in particular education. And, you know, artificial intelligence is something that I focus on, you know. And so when the idea was floated well first of all we we utilize artificial intelligence um inside the organization um to help to power a, a number of things that we do and we thought that and um, why not leverage our internal competencies in order to to make the prospectors a little different and so i mean the drive for us is how can we integrate artificial intelligence you know cutting edge technology to, uh, to 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 build out and to allow for processes to be improved right and so part of what we have done here is to instantiate that in the case of a bot that actually allows people to interact with the prospectors but it goes far beyond that it's about how we continue to integrate artificial intelligence to make our learning platform and the individual nature of how learning occurs to become <clears throat> live in our platform so that people now are not getting the cookie cutter type of um, you know, access to learning as, as you would in, in many other cases. <clears throat> but we use artificial intelligence to help people to learn better. Right? <clears throat> and so UNA is just one instantiation of that big idea that we have. And <clears throat> we look forward to pushing further and, and you know, um, all of this is driven not just by what exists, but our innovation <clears throat> and proprietary work that we do in relation to building out these technologies at, the, at, at you know, in terms of our research and development activities. Mm -hmm. And so we're not talking about taking technologies necessarily from other places. We're building, we're innovating, we're making new <clears throat> things, 
right? And we are trying to make sure that whatever we do, it is powered by the cutting edge nature of these technologies, because all we want to do is to make learning more accessible, to build the best technology, so that, I mean, whatever we do, it empowers and it provides easy access and access that, you know, almost guarantees that the learner is going to um, excel in, in whatever they pursue. Okay. So one of the things that we have, so we, we have a Telegram group with over 2,000 members right now, and every day new persons are added. And so you'll find that, for example, we get asked the same questions over and over and over again. So based on how, for example, how UNA is built, is that something that I could say, for example, get that get that 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 template or that that program from you pro entering some of the questions that i get asked all the time you know how do i open a brokerage account how much do i need to open an, an account here you know what's you know just some of those questions that we get all the time is that something that it can it be repurposed in that way or how how would it be able to spread you know outside of the the purpose for which you've built it. Yeah, man, we have significant internal capabilities to build out this product for different uses. <clears throat> um, definitely, we are able to easily um, train Una um, on different data sets and different content, right? And it may not be Una, but it may be a name that you like, <laughs> and we build that out for you. So definitely, um, the way how we have structured our, our, our project internally is that it's adaptable, right? We didn't just build this for one use. As I've said, we've used bots in, in other things that we've done. And we, because of our competencies and how we have utilized this, um, it allowed us to quickly move it into this current use, which is really to revolutionize our prospectors um, are made accessible. Because we know the generation of investors now, especially you know, the young middle age, they want the quick information at their fingertips. And so we were poised to access this opportunity because of what we have been doing, right? We weren't sitting down waiting, we were innovating. And so when this opportunity came, it was easy for us to just build that out right and to make sure it works so definitely una is available and can be made available and if you don't like una in her current form then i mean whoever you want that part to be for your business for your um application we can build that out for you because we have significant internal competencies in order to make that happen great because so i was actually asking in a group about a month ago i was looking for somebody to help uh, write a program for Telegram because again, so we have, we have a few things we're thinking about, right? The size of the group is one, so we have a lot of conversations, and 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 Ricardo can probably attest to this because he's been kind of, you know, sitting in silent mode in the group for a little bit. So it's been at least a month <laughs> at least he's seen just the range of conversations we have in in a given day. So I'm thinking of things like. How do you curate the conversation, right? If somebody wants to be able to search a topic that has been discussed, can we present that information a certain way? Do we, you know, create something to allow persons to be able to ask specific questions? Um, so just, we can definitely talk about it. Yeah, man. We, thing, we have, that. one of the components of UNA is, is part of what we have built into training UNA um, to actually evolve as more information comes in and so that's definitely a use case which we have considered and, and we can easily put in okay. you know jeremy in in addition to what is used now so first for um first of all someone asked why the name una yes well, so she's a girl <laughs> and she's a girl and um you know she she's the only one right she's only one right so you know, that's why we, we came up with that. But one thing I would say, in addition to what Dr. Anderson mentioned, there's been so many people calling us since we launched this, asking us to use it in banking, insurance, and different areas, customer service, and so on. Just imagine if we can have a company, um, you know, using this to, for example, replacing a human or two, for example, and they can build out. And I know it's scary, guys, but somebody has to do it, by the way, okay? I mean, there, there are some basic functions that, for example, yeah. right now that the bank is closed, you can't get certain information, right? So there, there, there is a place for AI to be able to take away some of the things that, again, might be 
repetitive in nature and that can allow us to use our time in maybe more productive ways. So yeah. I will tell you. Yeah, go ahead, Doc. I'll go tell ahead, you, Doc. there's an instantiation of a bot, yeah. um, which is not called Una, but we use it in one of our deployments, right? At a at um at a very large scale, and it, it, it fields millions of questions, right, per month, and is able to reduce what we have to do in terms of our life support because it, it answers and provides appropriate guidance, right, to millions of queries, right, over time. And when we look at the amount of hours it saves us, it definitely has made us far more efficient. All right, so we have a live instantiation of that right now. Yeah. Okay. Great, great. All right, if anyone has any specific questions about Una, we'd probably take them now. Um, not, let me check the group as well as I say someone is testing it out in the group. <laughs> great. Uh, Dr. Anderson, feel free to join us in the group as well, just in case there are any questions about Una. I think that's it, though. Um, I do see a question here about uh, about the financials. Dr. Anderson, you're free to stay with us um, if you wish. Uh, Doyle is asking, Ricardo, um, with the 10% projected increase in salary costs for FY23, could you speak on how the company plans to keep the, the admin costs relatively flat with the, with the 2022 year-end projections? Yeah, that's a very good question. I mean, so, you know, as you first of all, as you become a public company, there are, there are more costs that we're going to um, incur outside of just salaries. Um, what I can tell you is that the dynamic of the, the company is changing a little. So we're doing a few things internally, such as how we, for example, um, treat with some of our hosting uh, relationships. The longer contracts that we have or hosting relationships um, cost less because we can lock into hosting agreements for longer. And so you're charged less, right? So that's number one. And then we have some other areas. I mean, outside of hosting, marketing, and salaries, we don't spend much outside of that. We don't have a building where a fully remote office and so on. So we don't have a lot of those costs. So it's really just a reduction and making other areas efficient um, and while, while we're able to kind of grow salaries. So, so that's kind of where it's coming from. So again, some of the software that we use outside of hosting, we plan to lock them up for longer periods paying less and that's how we plan to kind of get some kind of cost efficiencies there you will also find going forward that we treat with um direct costs a little differently not sure what my auditors will say about that meaning that from leasing leasing our technology to people now um to to the use to generate income what you'll find is that the cost associated with, with that will be direct costs versus the selling and general expenses ah, okay. right so it's going to move up um, to that direct cost line. Okay, great, great. Thank you. Sure. Uh, so we get into. I see if we be able to answer these a little better, but I hope I'm doing a good job. No, man, you are. You are. You, you're giving us um, the insights that we were hoping for because we do understand and we know that more information will will come out over time. So we 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 really appreciate it. Uh, I see a question here. Any plans to list? on the nasdaq boy if i do that or when i do that i'd be very happy right listen there's nothing that is bounding us right now uh we again i use the example whatsapp could have been created in jamaica hint hint right like we are creating technology that will power global personalized learning that's the vision of the company you know cruz i went to a management retreat the other day and i said to my my chairman he says what's my vision i says to create the leading, the global leading company in connecting people to knowledge. And he says, Ricardo, why you want to be the leading? Why not a leading? And I said, Cherry, what if that's what we want? And he says, well, go for it, right? The truth is, my brother, we have some really strong people on the team, right? Young, energetic, experienced people on the board level. We have a guy like a Douglas Lorraine, who's our mentor, who took Grace Kennedy to places like Africa and the UK, Canada, those places. We have Mikey Bernard, who ran career as we a part of a global conglomerate, right? We have so much heavy eaters in the market and so on. And so I want you to understand that I cannot say much, but we are very bullish on global expansion. And our aim is to continue to raise capital 
Um, there's a limit to what you can raise in, in Jamaica on our market. The stock exchange is one step, and I'm very appreciative of the ability to do this at this point. But I can tell you, on the President Obama Fellowship in 2016, I met a fellow um, entrepreneur, and she has a, 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 you know, a business called Beer or Coffee, okay? And I saw where she just closed a round of funding for $10 million US dollars in a Series A funding, okay? That's the first funding that you do. That's the equivalent of 1.5 billion Jamaican, and that was privately done. What I'm saying is that in order to achieve our global expansion ambition, we must raise capital internationally, and we shall raise capital internationally. So, Cruz, we have some big, big, um, you know, vision and opportunities, and we want you to join us as we take this journey. Great. Thank you. Um, Khalil is asking, can you speak more about the fully remote office? Um, is there no physical office? Yeah, there's none. Uh, <laughs> you know, we, we um, so funny story. When we, in 2016, uh, we decided to actually, one developer came to the office and he kept listening to classical music, right? And it was bothering everybody else. So we told him to work from home. And, you know, when he started work from home, he became more productive. And so everybody started working from home, right? And so we've really built out a business before covid and then before you know it, nobody came to the office. And that's why we had to close down the office. So we've really built out a, a business before COVID, guys, that were, was very distributed and decentralized. It's very much aligned to our global strategy where we believe that when I close my computer and I open it up back, that's my office. That's the world, wherever you want to be. No, we're very conscious of the team and how this impact the team. And so we have, you know, promoted Brittany Singh Williams. She's now the head of people and culture. And her job is to keep everybody all around the world, um, the culture, and we come offline to have fun and so on. So she keeps that going, right? And we also have Dr. Anderson and his team ensuring that from an IT perspective, we can continue running a global company. Our company is powered by Zoho. Um, so we're very efficient with all our operations, you know. So, for example, you know, when I send out a letter, it files itself. Dr. Anderson says that we use AI at one-on-one. -on -one. If you want to see AI... Come work at one on one because everything we try to automate, every single thing, right? I tell people if I could have my car drive me everywhere, it would. Uh, we're very much a believer of that. That's how we're going to achieve operational efficiency at scale. And so that's how we're able to kind of run a business online. And, you know, if you take me and put me in an office now, I would not know what to do because I'm so much used to this environment in working distributed. Okay. So Andre, you might have missed it. We spoke about Q4 already. So just when when we're done here, just re rewatch maybe about at the 45 minute mark, we spoke about Q4. So be sure to check that out. Uh, so I think now is a good time. There's one final question. Let me get to it before we talk about how to apply. So um, Azia is, is saying, Ricardo, nurses need to realize and by annually, do you think you can build CME courses? Uh, um, one second. Yeah, man, no problem. All right, yeah. So, so, so right, I just got an email. Um, right, so, yeah, so the, by the way, it's good news. The, <laughs> the, the, Okay, so yeah, no, absolutely. So these are the opportunities that we want, um, Azia. If you could just drop me a note, I can get you my. If if you're on the Telegram group, I'm right in there. Just send me an email. I connect you to Janelle, and and we'll get started on how we could help them, right? Because this is the thing that we want to do. Every certification that's offered in Jamaica, Caribbean, we want to be powered on one on one's platform. We want to make it accessible and available to everyone. So Azia. That's what we want to do. So let's do it. Great. All right. So let's talk about the questions relating to how to apply. So Ricardo, at first, when we spoke on Monday, we did the prospectus review. We were told that applications are only on the Sagicore e-invest platform that has since been changed. Uh, we actually did a, 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 a small poll to ask persons which platforms they'll be interested in. Uh, so talk to us about how persons can apply, um, what the status is currently, what platforms are available, and if there are any plans for any other platforms to be added. And then if there is, there are some challenges that persons were having, I'm not sure if you're being made with, aware of, of all of them, but address the ones that you're, you're aware of and how we can possibly solve them. 
Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, thank you so much, um, Jermaine. So the one thing I would say, um, first of all, is that Sajikor, as our broker, as you know, we've really worked well together in terms of getting to this stage. They have been supporting one on one since 2015, um, investing in our core technology um, to this point, right? So you know, I want to big up Sajikor for what they have done, and you know, based on the overwhelming demand that we've had, even coming out of Khalil and so on, and so many people trying to apply, obviously. Um, there has been some challenges. Um, I know eInvest, um, they took it down today to actually finalize. And I know that persons have been reporting that it's now working and accepting applications. So I'm encouraging everyone to go on eInvest, Sajikor eInvest to apply. Um, you know, if there are any issues, which I don't suspect that they are, you know, you know, to just to reach them via the contact us option. So Sajikor e-invest is the primary way to go. Obviously, as Sajikor um, has announced yesterday, um, you know, they're opening up the, the process to other bidders. You know, you know, obviously, Sajikor has a great relationship with all the, the investment houses and so on. And, you know, we are working together to ensure that uh, we ensure that everyone, wherever you are, you can invest. Just to note that where, whichever bank you, you bank with or investment broker that you have, you can use Sajikor e-invest to do it. It doesn't matter where your investment is. You can log on and you simply select your bank and you enter your information and you go. My understanding is that the system now is up and running, so you can go there and try to do it. Um, and if there are any challenges, you can reach out. Now, JMMB has been added as well. Um, that was yesterday, and we continue to work on you know just seeing... How best we can meet the needs i know for sure that there 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 has been conversations um to look at any more you know and and we continue to monitor the environment and see where more is needed if if needed but you know the overwhelming demand is is certainly appreciated and we we, we love the fact that people love our ipo and we want to make all the opportunities for you to invest um open and available to you so you can trust us um you know trust sajikor i mean obviously you know we're working together um on this and you can trust them to to deliver on this mission right in the same way that they have done for jmmb you know they're they're listening to the customers and, and what they're asking for i mean to the extent that they can so you know sajikor has, has done a fine job so far and we continue to back them in this process great so thank you for that, Ricardo. So just so everybody hears, regardless of where you have your brokerage account, you can apply on Sajikor e-invest. That's the first one. Now, if you have a personal preference, JMMB Moneyline is currently added. Um, you can you can go there and apply now. And the 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 expectation is you you may be over the next few days be able to to have other brokers being added in terms of it being available on their platform. So, so just, just note that. Now, one of the questions that we saw, so there are some persons, you have a teacher pool specifically. So yeah. I want to talk about the teacher pool. For, so for everyone who is not, well, yeah, speak about the teacher pool first. I was going to say some persons have asked which pool they apply for. Now, the non-reserved pool is for the public. So if you are not previously informed that you are one of, one of the other pools, chances are it's the non-reserve pool that applies to you. But for persons who are teachers, there have been questions about how do they know that they're that they're eligible for that pool. Can you share a bit on that? Yeah, so teachers, I mean, teachers, you know, they're a very important part of what we do at one on one. Okay. Um, oh, I see I have e-invest up that is now up and running. Um, very good. And I see Dane said that it's up and running. All right. So I yes, think we're yes, good to that's, go now. That's good. That's the the good. good thing, Jermaine, obviously, with the, with the overwhelming demand that we've had, I'm very happy to know that we are we, we kept the pre-opening period two weeks because at least it gives time still for to work is out, yeah. Yeah. For, for persons to get in and as far as many brokers um to, to be involved as possible. Now for teachers, obviously, is a big part of one on one's growth strategy. Um and so it was very, you know, straightforward, frankly speaking, for us to um, invite as many teachers as possible. And, you know, we, we, have, we have certainly um, set aside $30 million for teachers 
um, for two reasons. Number one, we want teachers, we believe that teachers are the backbone of the education system and we want them to benefit from a company that is going miles in education globally. We want to take them with us. Just imagine, Jermaine, when we become this global powerhouse in, in online learning, we have 23,000 teachers behind us, okay, um, pushing content through our platform um, globally and earning from that. That's amazing. And so we not only want teachers to earn, from their own knowledge. We also want them to earn through dividends and we also want, want them to earn through returns on their portfolio. So we've set aside a pool for $30 million. We've partnered up with the JTA to make this happen. Obviously, um, Jermaine, you know, some teachers are saying, boy, they may not be registered with the JTA and so on. And, and we totally understand that. I just want you to know that our aim was always to include as many teachers as possible and the jta was an easy option for us because they have twenty three thousand teachers so if there are twenty four thousand teachers jta has for example 98 percent of them registered you know and yeah. so th that was the easiest way to verify teachers and to get them going because the question is how do you verify a teacher that they're a teacher um if they're not registered with the jt and then the question now becomes oh show me your qualification now we have to go through all qualifications so the point is we went that route because of that reason but you know we set this pool aside we understand that um there are a lot of teachers in this country and you know you know if everybody applies they, they, each person may get a thousand a thousand five but we believe that this is a starting place because no matter where you start you are going to join a movement that's going to go places and this thing is going to do really well uh, i can feel it um you know as the leader of this team we have an incredible team or, or management team. I tell people, you see me here every day, but behind me, there's a team and that team is motivated and passionate to achieve the dreams that we all have of education just in Jamaica regionally and beyond. So yeah, the teacher pool is fire. I love it. Uh, I want all my teachers to invest. You know, Jeremy, let me say this. My father-in-law is a teacher, retired teacher. His name is Carlton Clark out of Clarendon. Um, and he taught at Glenmuir for years. Some of your audience may know him. And he had all these great passes. And I said to Mr. Clark a few years ago, come let me write some accounts content for you. And he wrote the content. And in this IPO, he has been granted shares. And Mr. Clark is going to be a millionaire, for example, out of this IPO. That's the power that I'm saying. We had another eight teachers, for example, who wrote content for us eight years ago. They have been granted shares, millionaires, all because they invested early. And so we want to give those teachers that power to earn and see the power of investing um, through their work and through their knowledge. And as, as, as I said to you in the group, we definitely um, are on board to be a part of that because we, we actually do uh, presentations to schools and churches at no cost. So we'd definitely be willing to partner with you to get teachers educated to learn about investing. I see a question here from Lori. Um, if if she's asked she's saying she's not registered with the jta so that means that she can't benefit right so that's that's what you're saying if if, if they are not registered at the date as at the date of the prospectus they wouldn't be eligible for the teachers pool but they can apply through the general yeah you can apply through the general pool teachers who are registered um with the jta as at the date of the prospectus will get in okay all right uh let me see if there are any other questions here so uh, I, I think Alian, hopefully, again, Ollie is not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. He, he's, you know, upset about the volume that's given. Is he a teacher? Um, are, are you a teacher? Sounds like you, you might have some. All right. If, if he is a teacher, right, um, let mm -hmm. me tell you, man. We tried, Alian, we tried. I, 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 I fought, we fought. We believe in teachers. Initially, the pool was actually less. And through consultation, oh, the public. Okay, I got it. So he said the public. Okay, so, you know, look, again, no matter how we went, you know, I don't know if you know, but the regulated stipulation is that a minimum of 20% is made available to the public. And we've offered 33% to the public um, or thereabout. And obviously, with teachers, we had to give like a, a 10% or a shade below 10%. We have our team members who have worked. Uh, we've given 10%. So we've really tried our best to 
um, and, and team members are very important. So we've really tried our best, Ali, and I want you to trust me when I say that we tried and we tried to make it as much as possible for the public. Unfortunately, uh, we were only able to, to do 30%, which is still more than the minimum. Um, but what I would say is that there will be more opportunities for the public to, to, to earn from one and one. There are some, a lot of opportunities coming up. I can't speak to them, Alian, but what I can tell you is that stay tuned. This is only the first step. Uh, we will be back and we will be back much bigger, right? Um, so, Alian, rest assured that we'll all be, 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 be coming on one-on-one on one at a much higher scale going forward. All right. Thank you so much, Ricardo. So what I'll ask you to do now, I think we've gotten to most of the questions. Guys, if you have any question that we didn't answer or maybe I missed it, post it under the video in the comments or you can post it in the Telegram group or on any social media platform because we're on all of them. Just post a question under this video. We're actually streaming this now on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. So from, from, from wherever you're watching, feel free to ask a question and we'll answer it. Ricardo, I'll ask you. So usually I ask CEOs when they join to to speak to or make or make an appeal as to the they well share who they think the company is 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 an ideal investment for. No, this is not financial advice. We're just asking you to say, well, who who do you see one on one as a company being ideal for? And you know, your final thoughts um, as we close out here. Um, no, um, sorry, I got distracted. Could you ask me that question again, please? I got yeah, distracted. No by so, group, so, by so, so I'm asking you to pretty much share as as your as your final comments. Just kind of it it's it's like you're making a pitch to your to your potential investors to just kind of speak to um, who do you think one on one would be a, an ideal investment for, and you know any any final comments or thoughts that you have in closing. No, certainly. First of all, thank you guys for joining me this evening. Jeremy, thanks for the opportunity. Um, you know, I was born in a place called Rayboy in Trelawney, Falmouth to be specific. Uh, went to school for seven years of my life in Rayboy in Trelawney, moved to Kingston, went to school. And I've attained the highest level of and the most quality um, education at all levels coming up. What I can tell you is that I know the good, the bad, and the ugly. And it is what has motivated me uh, to solve big problems in education, training, using technology. I have created a company with a team of very, very um, young, experienced people. We have put, a, put together a board and we have the backing in terms of financing that has brought us this far. But to go to that next stage, to go to the Caribbean, the, the global um, focus that we have, the dreams that we have, um, that may seem very big to many people, but to us is well within our reach. We know the technology we have. We know the content we have. We know the people that we have. And we know the skill within which we can operate. I am saying an investment in one-on-one -on -one is, an, is an investment into the future of Jamaica. Just imagine a Jamaica where over 50% of our workforce are trained beyond the high school level, where people can actually enjoy their time with their families, work and earn and so on. Just imagine a Jamaica for a minute where we can begin exporting our services to the world in ways that we have never imagined. Just imagine that Jamaica. The backbone of that vision, though it seems far, has to be education and training. It is why I am very interested in this particular objective. It is why I have dedicated my life along with my team to do this. And by God, if we have you on board, every single person on this call we're talking about the ones who are learning we have a platform for you the ones who are training we have a platform for you the governments who wants to digitalize we have a platform for you we believe one-on-one -on -one is the backbone of online learning and continue to be the backbone of online learning and we are very excited about the future so join us join this movement join this passion um this ipo is is not about um just the money and the profit and all of that it's not it's about something deeper, something that is much bigger than every one of us to create a future that we want to live in and also for future generations. So, you know, everyone who has that passion, who shares in that passion, no matter who you are, if you had a teacher, you had a grandmother who is a teacher, or if you benefited from a teacher, if you benefit from training or learning, this is the IPO for you. So join me. 
as we go on this exciting journey. Very happy to have you. Jermaine, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ricardo. Really, really do appreciate it. So hopefully we'll be able to speak to you again shortly after everything is over and, 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 and you have some time. I'm looking forward to those for the annual report for 2022. And yes, I was actually just going to close with that. So I have 144 persons here. Thank you all for being here. I'm going to ask you to please take a moment to like the video. And, you know, just it, it helps us a great deal. And it, it actually just it, it, it's a simple thing that tells the algorithm that you found value in the video. So thank you so much, guys, for being here. Thank you, Ricardo. Really, really do appreciate it. Thank you for all of the time you've taken to answer questions in the group. I know it makes persons feel a lot better to hear the information from the source. So thank you so much. Really, really do appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, guys. I really hope. Rick, that would have been an excellent question to ask before we ended. We, we'll ask him in the Telegram group what what would the, the ticker symbol be. So thank you, guys. Hopefully, um, there are no other pressing questions. If you do, if you do have them, again, Telegram, any social media platform, that's fine. Thank you so much for being here. We do have a video that was due from last week. That's a fast rich 10 to 1 stock split video. I'm hoping I'll be able to record that tomorrow. My apologies for not being able to put it out already. I hope you've been catching our weekly IG lives on Tuesdays. We, we, we did one this week to speak about how to read a prospector. So we've been going live Tuesdays on Instagram. Not sure if it's going to be every week. Let me just say that from now. But we're trying to put out content that can help you outside of these videos that we do. Again, I mentioned the, the newsletter that we have earlier. What we try to do there is put in content that you don't see on YouTube, that you don't see on the other platforms because it's directly to your inbox. So we try to go a little bit more in-depth there. So, you know, be, be sure to, to, to check that out and subscribe. The link is in the description of this video. If you, if you see me looking away one sec, it's because I'm trying to stop all of this spam in the, in the chat right now. <laughs> so um, the link to the Telegram group is in the description of the video. So just scroll down in the description and you'll, you'll see a link there. We have a link for all of our, our community groups. We're on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Telegram. So be sure to join us on all three platforms. And yes, I think that's it. All right, guys, thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video. Learning is the key to successful investing. And who doesn't want to invest in some way? Here at Learn, Grow, Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing, and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at Learn, Grow, Invest.